Okay, it's Barry, and of course the PlayStation 5 Pro is planning to be released holiday season 2024. You will see an announcement, something to do with that PlayStation 5 Pro coming out. But what we're going to talk about today is, does it even make sense to upgrade from your current PlayStation 5 to your PlayStation 5 Pro? As we all know, the PS5 Pro focuses on GPU upgrades, advanced ray tracing features, and spectral super resolution upscaling, their special PSSR. PlayStation 5 Pro improvements might not translate to 60 FPS in every single game with limitations to potential enhancements. And of course, the PS5 Pro price may exceed $500, making it more appealing for new buyers other than PS5 current owners. But today I'm talking to the current owners of the PlayStation 5. We're gonna talk about the upgrades and see if it actually makes sense for people to upgrade from their PlayStation 5 Slim or their OG model. But before we get into it, I'd really appreciate it if you could just smash that like button and hit that subscribe bell. As I'm Barry Games, I make gaming content and news about all types of things. So you can check out the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So despite the lack of an official reveal, more information has emerged about the upcoming PlayStation 5 Pro model and just how much value it's going to bring to the table. As it's becoming increasingly clear, the idea of the mid-generation Pro upgrade was set into place during the last console generation with the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, offering significant boosts to consoles that were struggling to meet high resolution and performance targets on some games. It's not surprising that both Sony and Microsoft appear ready to continue the tradition, but that doesn't seem super necessary this time around because last time there was a huge incentive for Sony to get games running at a 4K resolution as 4K TVs were really hyping up. 4K really changed the game for gamers, get a lot more resolution rather than your uh, typical 1080p or 1440p affairs. But on the other hand, I do know that gamers do love huge improvements to their games. Getting a better quality of life improvement is something gamers will be considering. So I don't know. But the PlayStation 5 has enjoyed a successful console generation in terms of sales so far, which have consistently impressed in spite of initial supply shortages and plenty of jokes about its arguably anemic selection of killer games. Unlike the PS4, however, the PS5 isn't in dire need of an upgrade. To handle most of its current library without significant compromises, the PS5 Pro might have to bring a lot more to the table to make double dipping worthwhile, even if it could become an appealing option for those who haven't already invested in the system. The biggest news about the PlayStation 5 Pro came courtesy of The Verge, which has apparently obtained the specs and mid-generation upgrade and some references to show how its performance could compare to the current model. The big upgrade lies in the GPU, while the CPU is getting a higher frequency mode rather than an actual change or upgrade in its hardware. This does take a bit of power away from the GPU, and that is a trade-off that we will have to live with, but it could help games that are especially CPU reliant to still get a boost out of the PS5 Pro. The PS5 Pro GPU is supposed to represent about a 45% improvement in rendering speed, although tech analysis channel Digital Foundry points out that a slight downgrade in clock speed could limit its improvements. The most obvious upgrades to think about in terms of gameplay might be frame rate and resolution, but it looks like Sony is making a push for developers to use the extra power for enhanced ray tracing features. The advanced method of simulating light is officially supported on the PS5 and appears in a number of games, but the intense performance demands that come with ray tracing frequently make its implementation minimal or non-existent. The PS5 Pro is apparently making use of a more powerful ray tracing architecture which could significantly reduce the performance cost. Another important inclusion is PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution Upscaling PSSR, which seems to be a Sony's alternative to AI scaling solutions offered by Nvidia and AMD. This tech apparently makes use of machine learning making it closer in nature to NVIDIA's DLSS and AMD's FSR. 
Although how well it will perform in practice compared to these tried and true implementations remain to be seen. And I'm not sure if you ever use NVIDIA DLSS, but that makes games look so much better. The quality, the upscaling, the artifacting, it goes away. Like you don't get much artifacting with DLSS. Assuming PSSR does offer significant performance boosts, the scaling tech could end up being the key to making the PS5 Pro experience feel substantially different from the normal console. Scaling solutions can only do so much if the game is being internally rendered at a low resolution, but when it comes to punching something up from 1080p to 4K or similar tasks, it's an easy way to deliver a crisp output of smooth frame rate with relatively minimal compromises. And the PS5 Pro improvements might not be super big, but 60 FPS might still not be possible in every single game. Without actual examples of game performance to look at and compare, it can be kind of difficult to sift through the information and get a clear idea on how different the PS5 Pro experience will be in practice. Ray tracing improvements seem like the most reliable improvement for games with proper ray tracing support but this may not be a particularly strong reason to invest in a new system. Although ray tracing can be incredibly impressive, games and extensive ray tracing implementation tend to already have excellent lighting systems in general, so the difference isn't always as transformative as you think it's going to be. As analyzed by Digital Foundry and reported by IGN, the improvements offered by the PS5 Pro could still run into major limitations, assuming that GTA 6 runs at 30 FPS on the standard PS5, it can be expected to to hit the same frame rate on the PS5 Pro thanks to the lack of a significant CPU upgrade. Although Rockstar came out and said that they are confident they are going to make it work, get 60 FPS running on the PlayStation 5 Pro, even if features, if some ray tracing enhancement and enhanced resolution scaling being unable to push past the compromise on what's slated to be the biggest title of 2025 makes it hard to argue that the ps5 pro is a game changer in any real way the earlier release of the ps5 slim without a price reduction complicates the situation for the ps5 pro a 2024 price cut for the Slim might be frustrating to those who just bought it at full price, but it could allow the PS5 Pro to hit the current 499 MSRP. If the Slim doesn't get a price cut, then 599 seems way more likely for the PS5 Pro, and it seems unlikely that its graphical advantages will make that especially appealing price point. Ultimately, the PS5 Pro seems more likely to be a good choice for newcomers than a worthwhile investment for current PS5 owners. Those especially enthused by the ray tracing and potential resolution improvements could get a lot out of the system, but the PS5 Pro is poised to double the frame rates of struggling games. Although there's nothing wrong with chasing the best way to play games, anyone currently on the fence might not have enough of a reason to commit to the PS5 Pro upgrade. And of course, I want to pose the question to you guys, what do you think about the PlayStation 5 Pro? Do you think the upgrades warrant an upgrade from your PlayStation 5 right now or your PlayStation Slim that you rock currently? Let me know what you think about your consoles right now with the performance and does it stand up with the um, games that are coming out? Do you think that it could stand the test of time with those? Or with time, do you think it's just going to get worse and the frame rates are just going to bog down? PlayStation 5 Pro does seem like a pretty cool upgrade, so I want to know what you guys think about all this down in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about everything. I read all my comments. Thank you so much for watching this video to this point. It's been Barry Games, and as always, have a great day.